hoping to bring a sixth Super Bowl win back to Boston. And about 270 miles southwest in Philadelphia, the Eagles want to give fans their first Super Bowl championship. Morocco traveled to Boston and Michelle Miller visited Philadelphia to see how this Super City battle is shaking out. Let's check in first with Mo. Good morning, Mo. Good morning, John, and happy Groundhog Day. You know, the day we get to talk about how the Patriots are about to win yet another Super Bowl. Sure hope those Eagles fans know how hard it will be to overcome the history that continues to come out of the great city of Boston. Yeah. Michelle? Yeah, Mo. Uh, Boston is a terrific city. A big fan of those big beans. But anyone familiar with American history knows that Philadelphia is where the country actually began. And for Philly fans, well, that should be an encouraging lesson. Philadelphia, a revolutionary city where the United States declared its independence. One, two, three, huzzah! Just a sec, Michelle. These reenactors at the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum might take issue with that. Ditto the Patriots who fought the British at Bunker Hill. And those heroes like Sam Adams, who were the first to protest taxation without representation here at Faneuil Hall. You mean Faneuil Hall, the shopping center? We call it a marketplace, but yeah, lots of terrific shopping. Wonderful restaurants, too. More importantly, this is the cradle of liberty. I mean, if you're birthing a new nation, this is where you have the shower. Interesting, Mo, but freedom rang with the Liberty Bell. I suppose there's plenty of shared history in both cities, Michelle. Cobblestone Street. Check. Historical guides dressed in period costume. You better believe it. A centuries-old tavern where revolutionary war stories abound. The Green Dragons are just the ticket. And Paul Revere was partial to this place. What he said. Paul Revere came here, too, to the city tavern back in May of 1774 to warn the people of Philadelphia that the British had shut down the port at Boston. And this place was also a frequent watering hole of Ben Franklin. You know, our most innovative founding father. Wouldn't you say so, Derek Pitt, to the Franklin Institute? Why, of course. The lightning rod and batteries, two things our lives couldn't be this way without. There it is. I agree, Michelle. Ben Franklin is legendary, but he was, um, born in Boston. You're welcome, Philly. Mr. Telephone Man. The telephone was first exhibited here in Philadelphia in 1876. Hello? Hey, Michelle, it's me. Just wanted you to know that the first phone call was made in Boston. How do you like them apples? Check out the musical stairs at the Museum of Science. Any famous steps in Philly with their own? Soundtrack? No way. Not today. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If you really want to follow in Rocky's footsteps, take a stroll through the oldest outdoor market in America. I'll take two persimmons. The Italian market here in South Philly. Never mind the cowboy fan. Or you can hit Boston's North End and try the cannoli at Maria's Pastry Shop. Mm. Hey, Rob, leave the camera, take the cannoli. Don't touch the cannoli. Prefer a donut? I just don't ask for Boston cream here at Dottie's Donuts, but they're actually banned until the Eagles win the Super Bowl. Well, get this, Michelle. The Esplanade Park along the Charles River has banned anything associated with Philadelphia, including Will Smith, Sylvester Stallone, and actual Eagles. Not a problem for Ritz and Glory. The two bald eagles are perfectly comfortable here at the Philadelphia Zoo, which, by the way, was America's first. Boston's tea is America's first subway. Get this. The U.S. Navy was launched right here on the Delaware River. I bet you George Washington would have loved a boat like this. Cool your jets, Michelle. Any sailor with his soul is thankful for America's first lighthouse built in Boston Harbor in 1716. Hold up, Mo. I seem to remember you raving about Philadelphia in the summer of 2016. We saw you rowing on the Schuylkill River, having water ice with Derek Pitts. 
even dancing with the Philly fanatic. Well, I've done a lot of stories since then. I can't remember what I said. The point is, the Patriots stand to win a record-breaking sixth Super Bowl. Uh, actually, they'd be tied with the Steelers. Anyway, Michelle, I seem to remember you rooting for Boston last year. You know, skating in Boston Common, hanging out on the wharf, and cheering for the Patriots with actual Patriot cheerleaders. You might be right about that, Mo, but ain't nothing wrong with doing a little amour at the city of brotherly love. Besides, I look darn good in green. Yes, I do. steps by the way i know you're so cliche <laughs> can i just say and i still look good in green yeah you do yeah so who are you rooting for really um well i'm actually a redskins fan i'm a saint but they're fan. not in the super bowl i know exactly are they. so who are you rooting for i'm gonna root for um entertaining commercials yeah, there you go. <laughs> very safe mode. i believe i believe the phillies have it in the back because Nick Foles, the uh -huh. quarterback, quarterback, yeah, you know, he has a straight line to the big guy upstairs because he's in seminary school. That's right. He's praying and studying, and you know, I just think this year, the Eagles, the Tom Brady, Brady healthy, healthy so. yeah, and Tom Brady is God, so that may actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle, and they may be praying to God, but Tom Brady girl. is God. <laughs> Michelle, he hears our prayers, but he may not answer them. Yeah. I know. Well, you know. Nicely done, guys. Yeah, really, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do with all much. this information now? Huh? You can hear more of CBS This Morning on our podcast on iTunes and Apple's podcast apps. Today, CBS Sports National columnist Seth Bill Ryder offers a preview of the Super Bowl from Minnesota. He'll explore the team's fan bases and whether the underdog Eagles, Michelle, I'm can overcome cool. the reigning champs. That, of course, is the Patriots. Next, we'll take a look at all that mattered this week. Watching CBS this morning, we'll be right back.